Hey, 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 it's Evelyn and I'm back for another video. So I recently did a video where I was sharing with you like the books and the people that helped me like enhance my femininity. But one of you were like, can I do more videos on femininity? And here, here's, here's my challenge with that is, I think I said in that video, I'm not a femininity expert. I am, I am a lover of the subject. I am a student of the subject, but I also know when I'm in my lane and when I'm not. And, um, I'm gonna do this video here talking about kind of like when I first got introduced to the concept of femininity because believe it or not, it wasn't something that was a part of my vocabulary for a very, very long time. And so I kind of want to give you a backstory and then give you some, maybe some resources or some guidance or direction on how you can kind of take some similar steps that I did. So. I don't want my channel to become about femininity because I think there's some women that I've mentioned before that are way more well versed in it, that are way more um, skilled and called and like this is their life's work and they're really, really good at it. And so, like I said, Yaya Smith is probably at the top of my list. Um, Gina DeVee, Ashley Empowers, Monique Head, Life Coach Sean. So I will leave all of those women down below. So. I kind of want to give you the backstory on like, I remember the day that the topic of femininity was introduced into my life. So it was several years ago and I was hosting a, what I called a Thai 4th of July, right? So I was, it was the 4th of July, but I was doing Thai foods for some of my friends. And you know, when girlfriends get together, you know, conversations about life and love and relationships and different things happen. And so I remember I had two sets of sisters there. So one set of sisters was, is my, were my friends. Another set of sisters were my friends. And I had another girlfriend there. My mom was there. And the topic of dating came up. Of course, you got all these single women in the room and the topic of dating came up. And so I remember the conversation kind of shifted towards, um, particularly African-American men, black men uh, dating outside of their race. And, you know, in some circles, that's a that's a topic of conversation. In some circles, it's not. And so I remember one of the sisters of one of the friend groups said, and, I, and listen, if this was the reason that she came into my life, I'm forever in her debt because she said, you know, we were talking and having a discussion and I'm in the, like in the kitchen and cooking and piping in, you know, when, when appropriate. And she was like, you know, a lot of people think that when, um, men of any race date outside of their race, it's because of, you know, self hate or, you know, they don't like their own. And, and, and while we all agree that that may be a percentage of them, we didn't really think it was the mass majority. And she said something so inter interesting. She said, when they go to date outside of their race, she said, there's something about the women that they choose. Not all the time. So this is, and I don't want this to become about like dating outside your race. Cause that really wasn't the point. Um, because like do your thing like that's not like y'all know well y'all listen if y'all know me y'all know that that's not what this channel is about we we love everybody but um she said that there is a softness sometimes about the women that they choose that sometimes their experience with women of their own race they may not have experienced i'm, I'm like i'm putting i'm paraphrasing because this was years ago and she was like you know they just seem to be more feminine she was like so it's not that they're necessarily prettier or smarter or more successful you know and so this this that's the first time i remember as an adult femininity coming into my conversation and it like stuck with me it's like a little thing pinged up in, inside of my head and was like femininity let's let's talk about that and i remember at that time we didn't really go deep. We, it was kind of like a passing conversation and we were off to the next thing, right? And so I was like, hmm. And so, you know, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to share what I'm about to share next because um, I don't get a lot of trolls on my channel, but in the event that I do, like I I, I tread lightly with what I'm about to share, but in the, in the spirit of being transparent, I want to do this. So I really needed to understand what femininity was. I don't think I fully, at the time, I didn't really grasp what it was and so of course like a lot of women i kind of started with the external so everything that i was reading or watching whether it be on youtube was about like the way you speak you know the way you dress you know your grooming habits and what i realized is i was like there's got to be more because i saw women who were 
soft spoken, beat, snatch, hair fried, dyed, laid to the side, you know, feminine or or a uh, girly in their appearance, but like I wouldn't consider them feminine women. And so over time I learned that yes, your beauty is a is a portion of femininity and it's is definitely an important one. Um and it's not a one size fits all like you have to look a certain way. It's about enhancing your own beauty. But anyway, it is a part of femininity, but that is not where it begins. And so um so I decided that I wanted to know, because of the conversation that my friends and I had, I wanted to know, particularly if black men thought that, for the most part, did black women struggle with their femininity? Um, and so I started an experiment. Like, I can't believe I'm putting this on the internet. I started an experiment. Um, for the next probably two and a half years, every time that I had a conversation with a black man, regardless of religion, age, sexual orientation, stage of life, I would ask that strangers, I mean, I'm talking about men in the airport. If I, if I was having a conversation with a black man, I was determined to get this question in because I wanted, I wanted like a sample size. I wanted to see was this a thing. And so this is what I would do. Um, I would ask them this question. I said, Hey, I want to ask you a question. I don't want to give you any context or background information. I just want you to answer honestly. And no matter what you say, I won't be offended. So I'm talking about from young men, like teenagers to old men, like have grandchildren, like teenage grandchildren and everything in between. Okay. Different social economic status, you name it. Okay. And so I would ask them this one simple question. I would say, do you think that black women, not all, but as a collective struggle with their femininity? And y'all, I've, I've never, as, let me say this, before I tell you the results, I will say this, y'all know that I used to be a chemical and environmental engineer. I mean, so I've been in labs, I've done science experiments, chemistry, biology, like I've gone a long way in doing experiments and hypotheses and data and all that kind of stuff. Never in all of my lab time, experimentation time, doing other tests in life, have I ever seen where a result came out to be 100% unanimous every single time. And what was interesting, so all of their answers were yes, right off the bat, every single time their answers were yes. And I, I was a little taken aback. Now, now, let me say this. I wasn't offended. Um, I feel like God has given me the unique ability to be in situations where I know that I could be offended. I could be on the defensive. I could get my feelings hurt. And to be able to go, well, I could learn. Maybe one day I'll share a story with you about that whole thing. Um, but I've been in some really, really unique circumstances where if I humbled myself to hear what people were saying and and be able to hold space for their honesty that it was really eye-opening and actually really beneficial if I chose not to immediately get on the defensive immediately be offended immediately be like well what about y'all and so I decided that was the posture that I wanted to take with all of these men and I let them share without judgment without interruption without condemnation and they went on to elaborate and y'all it went from being a little like, oh, wow, it, it was almost like this this secret that I never knew existed that they knew it was so new to me. And I was and I was like, y'all been knowing this the whole time. And it what was interesting. What was so interesting about it was that all of their explanations and none of these men knew each other. This is the thing. y'all. I'm talking about I was waiters at the airport. um, on jobs, like friends of friends, like none of these men knew each other. Like I said, different educational backgrounds, social economic background, family structures, sexual orientation, you name it. Their answers were so similar that it was like, let me pay attention. And if you're anything like me, I know you probably have had homeboys or cousins or uncles or brothers or fathers, whoever, who have always said the phrase, women, y'all have all the power. Y'all just don't know it. And I remember going, what does that mean? What What do you mean we have all the power? And what they really meant is femininity is our superpower that we didn't know it. And so to hear them 
go on to explain the best that they could, what they meant when they said, yeah, I do. I do think that as as a collective, not 100%, obviously, that Black women struggle with their femininity was really eye-opening. And I felt very fortunate that they felt safe enough to be honest with me, um, to be transparent with me. And what was interesting, none of them said this, but the feeling that I got was, is that they were desperate for it. Like, they love us, y'all. Like, they they love us. And I know somebody could come across this video and be like, no, they don't. Look at what they say on Twitter and social media. Y- you get what you search for. I'm telling you, they love us. They love us. They they desire us. They They want to make our lives easier. They want to make us happy. They think we're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Like they think we're, we are the bomb to take it back to old school slang. Like they think we're all that, you know what I mean? But they need, not desire, not really, really want, they need our femininity. And it's almost like they are in starvation for it. And so after I did that experiment for about two and a half years, like just every, I mean, like it was like, I didn't care what we were talking about. I needed to know what was their answer to this question. So after I kind of did my sample size, right? And I, I mean, I don't know, two and a half years, maybe 50 plus different men that I'd encountered. Um, I was like, okay, so this is a thing. And I started to really turn inward to go, okay, let me start looking at my femininity. And I really, like I said, when I first started searching, it was a lot of external, really surface, just dare I say lame stuff. And even right now, I, I, I choose not to watch a lot about femininity anymore because a lot of people are jumping in the space because I think it's the new buzzword after self-care. Even though I'm somebody that talks about self-care, but I feel like I talk about like deep self-care, like self-care, yes, can include bubble baths and and, and candle lighting, but it also can include going to therapy. It also can, can include self-discipline and getting up early, paying your taxes on time. Like self-care is more than just a face mask and a, and a glass of champagne. That could be part of it, no judgment, but it's deeper than that. And it's the same thing with femininity. I think a lot of women are in the space and they're sharing what I believe to be prematurely um, because they're at the beginning of their journey. And so they're sharing their beginning of their journey. Somebody could look at me and say, um, maybe I'm early in my journey, even after all these years, which is why I don't claim to be a femininity expert at all. What I am is a student of it and I will always defer to the women who really helped me um uncover the femininity that God already put in me and take off the things that had got put on top of it and get really clear about what it was and was what it wasn't so fast forward to after my like two and a half year experiment okay and um I um I started doing a lot of reading and I remember I went um, I know I would start to do a lot of reading and then I got diagnosed with cancer <laughs> and like if you've been on my channel for a while then y- you've seen the stories or whatever and so I was at home for like a year and a half right just like I felt like I was like you need to sit down you're you're running at a breakneck pace and you need to just spend time with me for a year and a half get your life together um and so I remember I spent a lot of time with my focus really being about marriage and and Ironically, I'm not married, um, but I was doing a lot of reading and a lot of studying about marriage because it was this it was this thing that I said that I wanted, um, but I didn't really understand. And so I was like, you know what, let me let me let me know what am I asked? What am I saying when I say I want to get married or what am I really signing up for? Because I started to get have friends that were married and I was starting to get like a, you know, a behind the curtain view of what marriage was really like. And it wasn't as bad as some people made it seem, but it wasn't as, as sunshine and roses every day. Like some people made it seem either. I got a realistic, very balanced view of married life in different stages. And so I started watching um, Jimmy Evans, Miles Monroe, and I came across this subject of the top five needs of men and the top five needs of women. And y'all, it wrecked me. It, it wrecked me in a good way that this concept was so 
unfamiliar to me. It, it showed me something in me that I was like, oh my God, yes, that is what I need as a woman. And then to hear what men need, not want what they need, and to know that the two are so vastly different, um, that I was able to look back on previous relationships and be like, oh my gosh, I wasn't feminine at all. I wasn't giving them what they needed. Um, and I didn't know how to ask for or require what I needed because I didn't even know what I really needed. And so that piece of kind of being focused on relationships led me down this path of really understanding now more so than just about marriage, but like male and female needs under the umbrella of femininity. And that's when I really got deeply introduced to like masculinity and femininity and the, the beautiful dance that they do together. And so um, I remember where I went to, and I know this video is long, but listen, you asked for this video, so I'm giving you this video. So I went to fast forward to later, I think in 2016. Yes, I went to a business conference um, in New Orleans and I ran into this petite little woman who told me that her and her husband were urban farmers. And so me being a chef, I was like, oh, OK, you know, let's keep in contact. And so, you know, we did the whole social media thing and we were sending little memes and different things back and forth, you know, kind of like business besties, you know, kind of cultivating relationship on social media. And she was starting to talk about femininity in a way that I had not heard before. And she offered a class called Flawless Femininity. And I like I probably pulled out my debit card so fast it probably made my head spin. And I signed up and that was probably the beginning of really diving deep into um my femininity recovery journey is what I want to call it and so um and then eventually moving to you know talking with her privately and all this kind of stuff and taking other courses reading other books and I feel like I've come a long way um but that's kind of my femininity journey I, I mean I'm I'm there may be the chance there may be a lot of questions under this video I kind of shared a lot but it's so much deeper than what you wear, what you look like. Do you or do you not wear makeup? Do you or do you not get your nails done? Like, that's going to look differently for each woman. It's so much deeper. Femininity is about a way of being. Not what you do. It's who you be. Like, I have to use broken English. It's who you be. It's who you are. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a way of moving through the world. It's a way of communication. It's a way of working, a way of living, a way of connecting, a way of responding, a way of making decisions. It, it's a being, not a doing. Even that in itself, I learned that masculine energy is about doing. Feminine energy is about being. And, and, and here's the thing. I know when I say that, somebody's going to be like, what does that mean? It's hard to explain. It's taken me years to kind of grasp that concept. Um, but I know that if you start with the books that I recommended, if you, st if you take the classes from the women that I mentioned, you know, if you, if you research, you know, the two gentlemen like that Jimmy Evans and Dr. Miles Monroe, if you research them and you start where I started, I think you will take time. I, I there's no way for me to condense it down for you. Um, this video is already really long, but, um, that's it. That is my uh how I started my femininity journey. So, um yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.